In the arena of transportation air quality, there are terms used to describe the status of air quality in specific areas. Non-attainment means an area is not meeting national air quality standards. A state implementation plan, or SIP, is a plan for the area to get back into attainment. The term conformity refers to whether or not an area is complying with the SIP or allowances established for the particular area. If the area emissions are staying within the SIP allowances, or budgets, then the area is said to be in conformity. Here are the current locations in Utah that are designated as non-attainment areas. The SIPs for these areas are plans designed to reduce transportation-related pollutants to federal standards within two years. So exactly what are the pollutants we look at when determining non-attainment areas and must address to stay in conformity? Of the six regulated air pollutants, three are transportation-related, particulate matter, carbon monoxide, and ozone. Other regulated air pollutants are sulfur dioxide, nitrogen dioxide, and lead. An important thing to note when discussing transportation-related pollutants is most people assume they primarily come from tailpipes. However, depending on the pollutant, emissions from cars and trucks range anywhere from 0 to 56% of the total. For example, in 2005, non-transportation sources contributed 44% of carbon monoxide emissions in Utah, while more than 65% of particulate matter came from soot from industrial processes, blowing dirt and dust. The SIP lays out allowable levels for each source. The allowable level for transportation becomes the motor vehicle emissions budget. Determining air quality conformity by estimating future emissions is very important to maintain the flow of federal funds for transportation projects within the area. If there were to be a conformity lapse when the emissions are greater than the emissions budget laid out in the SIP, then federal funds would be restricted for capacity increasing projects in the area. Only exempt projects, as identified by the Transportation Conformity Regulations, can be used for projects within that area. State funds are also restricted if the project is considered regionally significant. The process of determining conformity has planners looking at regional transportation documents and analyzing them for conformance. First, there is the Long Range Plan which plans the transportation network to meet Utah's needs for 20 years. Then, there are Transportation Improvement Programs, or TIPS, developed by the Metropolitan Planning Organizations in cooperation with the state. And finally, there's project-level conformity for the NEPA process, which includes hotspot analyses for determining carbon monoxide and particulate matter levels for the project area. Although there are currently no conformity lapses in Utah, the standards change periodically due to studies on health effects. Criteria for both ozone and particulate matter will become more stringent in the next few years, which triggers a new SIP and new motor vehicle emissions budgets, which could be harder to maintain. This makes it all the more important for engineers and planners to take emissions factors into account today in order to prevent problems tomorrow. As measures become more strict, the possibility of a conformity lapse becomes greater. If that happens, we will need to reduce the mix or timing of project construction and also work very closely with the Division of Air Quality to ensure the emission budgets in the SIP are attainable and the flow of transportation funding continues. Continued diligence to today's standards will keep us from the danger of not conforming. In fact, Utah has been able to target specific emissions for reduction, but still has work to do. For more information, contact u.planning.